All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful day. It was a weird day in the market because even though we had the big data, the stock market was still stubborn and we didn't go anywhere. So we're going to talk about that when we get into the keys. But to give you the data, the October Jolts jobs report came in at 8.73 million, well below the consensus of 9.3 and almost 1 million jobs job openings below last month and even though this was the lowest reading since March 2021 the market barely moved the bonds were the real winner and by the end of the day I mean just take a look here spy was barely red Nasdaq barely green the Russell got clobbered thank God it's not showing that here today and then the Dow was once again right there in the middle as well so it was a pretty trippy day but it is leading into the main theme that we got to talk about we still have more data on the way and then even another event on Friday and then and you know it's Wednesday tomorrow we're close to Powell and the CPI next week. So we got a lot to talk about. I got the plays for you. I have the keys, the schedule for tomorrow, what I need from you, a thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open, youtube.com slash the stack market. We will see you there in the morning. Run it, baby. Yeah. Still reinvest it. Fear how I fear, then you feel less a blessing. I just want the lesson. I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Bummer never plans if you brace for perfection. I think it's in the down. Ball right off the bat. We're gonna start with the keys because I'm sure you're tired of looking at this chart all day, but why today was weird because we had a lot of economic data. We even had commentary from all of these investment conferences. There was Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and there was even one more. There was uh, so many things, even bad China data in the morning. And despite all of this, it wasn't a driver of the stock market. Yes, these events in certain things, especially the labor data, it moved the bonds, it moved the dollar, but you really did not have any follow through with equities. And that's why how we traded today, especially after almost a two standard deviation dovish labor data response, you went nowhere and it left us in this very weird state. So like I'm telling you, you had everything from the jobs, uh, update on the banks, Boeing came out with plane orders. We heard from Airbus, we heard from Starbucks. There was a ton of different events, but None of them were a driver of the markets. And what we kept talking about, that whole Russell small cap, the cyclicals are still a lot higher, but they got killed. And with everybody saying, oh, yeah, it's the move from year to date winners to losers. You saw the exact opposite today and you wound up with your magnificent seven in your NASDAQ. Those were the things that ran. I believe at the end of the day, there was only 28 names that were green on the NASDAQ 100 and we still managed to close green. So take it how you wish. It does leave us in an interesting scenario coming into tomorrow. You even had Bitcoin go crazy. That hit 4,600, but sure enough, we are just right back to the same level. Even how we traded today, borderline for 48 hours, you went absolutely nowhere, but this is something we've been talking about ever since we've got above 40. 500. We haven't came below it. And now you are doing this little dance, even as we got close to 4,600, as everybody every morning is trying to figure out, is this overdone? Are we going to go higher? What's going to happen? And now that's what's bringing us to the next key and middle of the week here. I'm hoping you're picking up on it because we are dealing with this every single day. And you had a little bit of it last week. The market is trying to decide right now if it is either taking a breather before rallying or we're waiting for the non-farm payrolls and the CPI next week. And the problem is nobody really knows yet, especially after a day like today where there was a bunch of events and none of it was a driver for stocks. It's leaving people asking, OK, does this recent stability, is it giving us room to Okay, breathe in and then we rally and hit the next leg of the rally or is everybody being cautious because we don't have the data cemented, all of the Fed futures and everything else has gotten extremely bullish? Are we waiting for confirmation of essentially 
what we already priced in, and sadly, we do not know just yet. That's why the rest of the week, it will be important, like we've been talking about in the non-farms, that is probably going to be your main event, but bringing you into the last key now, tomorrow, it is really going to be a toss-up, and why I'm saying that is because the jolts usually has a bigger effect, ADP private payrolls has not really moved us too much, but it is labor data. If we get back-to-back -back dovishness out of that labor data, it could be good. But now, if we're still trying to decide next leg up or yeah, maybe we got to calm down until we get the data next week, we may very well get a lot of movements like we saw today. Or maybe we kind of watch this weird rotation. If, Like I've been saying here, Russell has been leading four days in a row. NASDAQ has been selling off four days in a row or at least the big mega caps. So maybe this is the chance for things to to match up all the while if you didn't notice today the bonds also hit another low TLT is starting to break out last time TLT was at this price it was the beginning of September so we even hit a lot of the rally from here but it is slowly taking off and why that's important and why it kind of makes sense with everything. You guys remember this gap between the SPY and TLT? Well, a move like this, chilling out for a couple weeks, if bonds are really responding to the data, this could help close some of that gap and maybe calm some people down. But we'll see how it all plays out. The fact of the matter is now we are getting in this like halfway punt mode. And like we've said, punting, if the data does not move us, if everybody wants to wait for ADP, that is a punt. If this is a breather to the next leg up, we'll probably hit a new high and pump it up by the end of the week. That's what we got to be watching for. But sure enough, by Friday, we should get a much better answer than what we have now. So for the most part, the only other thing I say is watch out for China. We woke up with a little bit of weird data there. Uh, not only just data, but they also said that Moody's was placing their credit on negative watch. China did not like that at all. But the whole day today, I mean, it is as if there was no headlines, even though there was a lot. So we'll see how that plays out or when the market's ready to move. We'll see how all of that gets factored in. But besides that now, we got to bring it into the middle of the week, see the plays, and then finalize everything. So now let us get into the plays. So right off the bat, it shouldn't be too crazy of a day. Oh, boy, that's a horn. My bad. I do that a lot. On the, I hope you will get the hype, though. I do that a lot on the live watch list. I'm not live now, but let me start with the first play, Robin Hood. Like I'm saying, I'm not expecting much, but if there is any individual movers, you may want to pay attention to that. That has been the theme over the last couple of days, whether it's cyclicals, small caps, the tech stocks for today, even the chips going back and forth. And I have Robin Hood up here, but let me tell you why. Crypto. They gave an update today on the crypto transactions. If you haven't noticed what Bitcoin did today, yesterday, the last couple of days, it has been absolutely insane. And now Robinhood gave an update this morning on their guidance and they said, hey, our crypto trading is up by 78%. Things are looking pretty good. And now they are on the forefront of this whole crypto hype, especially if we get another leg up. So Robinhood has moved a lot in the recent days, but I would be watching what happens here, especially if we get any sort of Russell outperformance, this could be good, but they may start moving like Mara and Coinbase and just in general with Bitcoin, it is quite the interesting move. So they're in the gulag. Their earnings is still going to be coming up in a couple of months. If you are going to play options, maybe think about that earnings in a deep option chain. Other than that, though, I would be monitoring how this plays out over the couple of days, especially if crypto goes crazy. So that is play number one. I don't have any position on that. Now, play Play number two, this one's going to be a remix of a couple of other plays, but Humana and Egypt once again. So let me start with Humana, the news from last week, the Cigna UNH stuff or Cigna and Humana, that was a big deal. You even heard updates with like Walmart getting involved and they said, no, we're not, but why I'm bringing this up, I told you guys a couple of weeks ago or a week ago, it's going to probably sell off and then maybe find its way back up, and that's what it's kind of looking like. So I would watch out for any updates here, but lately we've been hearing of a lot of buyouts and mergers in this space. This is 
definitely one you're going to watch out for, but why I'm bringing up EYPT, we talked about this being the wet AMD drug yesterday, but this is my total speculation. They had an offering today, and they barely closed red. At one point, they were even up like 8 or 9% after the offering, and this is just leading me to totally speculate that they may be a buyout candidate, either end of the year or maybe into early next quarter around February. Pretty much, if you see EYPT, even after doing an offering, if it kind of does a pin and does not give back a lot of the recent gains and it kind of holds up here and trades a little weird, think about Proverbs. That was the play that we hit earlier this last year. Is it PRVB? Oh, can we not have PVRB? Yeah, I think they already got bought out. I can't even pull up the ticker, but that's how that one traded. They got a big approval, came out of nowhere, stock surges up a couple of hundred percent, holds a price, and then before you know it, somebody buys it out, and just why that makes sense here, we've had a lot of it recently, so tying in Humana merger, got a little EYPT, we've been getting some of these biotech deals every day, I would definitely keep your eyes out for it, but don't go too crazy. Again, this is pure speculation on my part. So that is play number two. And then finally, play number three. We got to talk about this. I actually have four plays too. I'm going to show you. But Baba and Yang. So China's getting worse. There was no good news except for like the Evergrande surprise delay that they got the other day. But Baba is near the lows. Things have not been working out for them. Yang, the inverse is like the UVXY of the China stocks. I've held this play for a minute here. That has gone back to green. That means there is a lot of volatility there. And now as we're getting closer and closer to the end of the year, I'm expecting either a pump on the China names end of the year or beginning of next. But at the same time, I think Yang is already moving up a lot. And they are hitting five-year lows in China, about to hit almost like 10-year lows, I believe. I think there's going to be a lot of action. I am planning to get out of my yang, so I'm going to be able to play the back and forth going off this idea, but China is very, very important right now, and I say that because they're doing so much, but they have not been getting any attention, so keep an eye on it. Just don't forget about it if you don't want to focus too much because it is a slow, weird situation until anything really pops off, but I do think this is going to be at least a banner headline by end of the year or beginning of the year. We'll see how Wall Street wants to take it, but that is play number three, and then finally, I got one more for you, man. Starbucks and consumer cyclicals. Now, this one, it's not as like cyclical as what we've been talking lately, but Keep in mind, there was a Morgan Stanley conference. They had a lot of updates on retail stocks. We've been hearing even Smuckers and their earnings and all of that. So I'd watch for some delayed digestion on some of these names, and especially after the days of Russell up, NASDAQ down, NASDAQ up, Russell down. On the days that we do move in tandem, I would watch for some of these plays, especially if they have had a good update as of recently. So watch out for those. Those are the main plays as far as everything else. That Japanese yen play was good from yesterday, and then I played the data, and I tried to do the Russell, and I kind of realized it very, very early in the morning. I got in here on this little dip right here. I was literally right when the data came out. I went long on an RTY, and I even added an M2K. I meant to buy the RTY, but I had my M2K up, so I added one of those. Now I'm holding four. Those plays are still up from last week, but then I'm down like 600 bucks right now on a big Russell contract because even though the data was good, not only was it short lived on every single one of the indexes I mean the Russell was the underperformer and we picked up on that pretty quickly so I don't think one day is going to define it I think it could be by the breather but like I've been saying here from the last videos even with that type of play that I'm holding now I do think that it is going to be a good month for the Russell in December so besides that nothing else gonna watch for the data maybe it's a chill day tomorrow but otherwise if things like crypto China and anything else wants to get attention maybe we make moves but hopefully we just get a lot of excitement on the Russell and everything else, but Chad, that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining, and I need you to remember, it doesn't matter how much you worry. It will not add one second to your life. Get some good priorities. What are you really worrying about? That's where the Trav right there from the Philo, baby. So God bless you all. I hope you're ready. Stay in the game, both mentally, physically, at every level. It's a blessing to wake up. So, Chad, you're doing something you love, too. Enjoy it and get ready for the next year. But I love you all. I'll see you in the morning. Drink that water. Stay hydrated, healthy, all that good stuff. And horn. <laughs>